welcome to the complete collection of Dwayne Wade's greatest stories. Thank you to everyone who was super patient for this episode. This one took me a long time to edit and produce. 33 minutes for all of you guys to sit back, relax and enjoy. If you have missed any of the other episodes within this series, there is a playlist link on the top right corner of your screen and in the description box down below. If you click on that link, you'll find all the episodes within this series. Thank you to everybody who mentioned I should do an episode on Dwayne Wade. If you have any other player suggestions, be sure to comment them down below and you might see those players in the next coming episodes. Without further ado, all I ask is that you hit that like button if you do enjoy this series and this episode. Subscribe if you are new for NBA content just like this one. Without further ado, welcome to the complete collection of Dwayne Wade's greatest stories. You can't stop Dwayne Wade. There's no way you can do it. I don't care what you try to put in front of him. There's no way you can stop him. People try to write him off, but he's one of the best players of all time. Probably the hardest guy I've ever had to guard in my career. He emerged as probably one of the best two guards to ever play the game. He was faster and quicker than what it seemed like. Like, you know, like you can watch somebody on TV and be like, oh, okay. But when you get him in real time, like, wait a minute, hold on. I was a victim of one of them trash <laughs> Euro. That was definitely one of my top Euros of all time. For whatever reason, never goes into consideration of the MVP. In every story, Act 3 is the most important chapter. The Miami Heat are on the clock. With the fifth pick in the 2003 NBA Draft, the Miami Heat select Dwayne Wade from Marquette University. If I can do it all over again, I would love to go five once again to Miami because it's a place where I feel I belong. In other words, Act 3 is where that hero becomes a legend. This is guard in the NBA. Oh, what a play! Oh, my God! He jumped right out of the building! He's Superman! In Act 1 of your story, you took the lead by storm. Oh, four. Because this, this would actually stop my trash talking towards players. So, oh, four. They start the season off 3-0. and We 2-0. You know? And, and they asked me a question, like, how are you going to stop the heat? Stop the heat. Nobody worry about that. <laughs> so we haven't, so we haven't seen them yet. So I, I did it. Nobody worry about the heat, man. I said, listen, they can't shoot. We just gonna sit on the zone. Bop, we good. Boop. Right. So I hear about what Gilbert say. You know, I'm not reading the papers, but someone tells me, and I go look, and I'm like, dang. So you know, like we got Brendan Haywood and them reading. It was like, uh, ooh. <laughs> he said, ooh. ooh. <laughs> He's like, you said this? I said, said what? You said uh, Dwayne Wade couldn't shoot. And we was, I was like, nobody reads the paper. Okay, so I mark on the calendar. Washington Wizards, oh, game shit. four. <laughs> Big circle. Right? So, and then like uh, my first three games, I'm already probably like, I'm, I'm balling. Like I'm mm-hmm. probably 30 at this point, starting the season. I was like, nobody reads the paper. You, you don't think he read that, do you? He was like, mm, we're about to find out. <laughs> I'm in my hotel the day that we're playing Washington, and I've been like, I've been using this this quotes that he said to start this season, and I'm actually just, I'm, I'm so ready for this game, like I can't sleep. And my phone rings in my room, and I'm like, I've never got a call in my room before. So I picked the phone up, it's Gil. You're right, I did call. Gil called, <laughs> he say, uh, you know, Man, you know, the media. <laughs> <laughs> you said the shit. You know, how they, you know how they spend things, man. You know, that's not what I meant. So forth, so on, whatever was said. And I'm like, I, I hang up the phone. I'm like, nope, you're not about to throw me off my shit. You're not about to throw me off. I'm going at Gilbert today. That's in my whole mindset. It was a Gilbert. It was about Gilbert. So this is what I've been waiting on all summer. Yeah, I just remember, yeah, because I'm looking 3-0. and Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, no, I got to defuse this. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> where that weight at? Yeah, <laughs> let me get that weight. I just remember I did call. I had no alias at the time. Oh, I wasn't like oh. nobody was checking for me yet. <laughs> we go, we go out the game, and we are underway in Miami. Larry Hughes goes out for two minutes. 
He scored 16 points. On me. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the bench. I think he read all of that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> do not... Do not put me on that man no more, <laughs> brother. I am not. I done learned my lesson. To Shaq and Wade left open for the long jump. 100 points a game. Wade draws contact and scores. Dude's still shooting well, 49%. Wade for Haslam. Score, and he's fast. Williams the other way. For Wade! He was faster and quicker than what it seemed like. Like, you know, like you can watch somebody on TV and... We're like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But when you get him in real time, mm -hmm. like, wait a minute, hold on. Hey, hold on. Why am I, gu why am I guarding him? He's too strong. <laughs> like, <laughs> y'all was making it seem like he was, <laughs> he was 205. I'm too, that is not a 205 right there. I don't know what that is. That is, that is not, the, this is not to say you're going to have to put the big, get back in here, Larry. So once Larry Hughes go out the game and they put Gibbard on him, I said, here we go. Gave us 37 in like 27 minutes. Well, you I too was skinny closer to 220. Yeah, I was like, Larry, yeah. you're too skinny for this man. Because I remember there was one play we was pushing. So we was like, all right, we're going. He's killing us going middle. Pushing baseline. Like, all right, push me. We're going. Pushing baseline. Be there. All right. <laughs> you go baseline and you spin out of that. So when people spin out of stuff, you didn't really, <laughs> you didn't really know what to do with it. <laughs> so he <laughs> went baseline and spit. Boom! He can dunk off the spins too. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What is this? He's, he's dunking off spins. He's dunking off splits. <laughs> Y'all can't guard this man to the basket. Y'all can't guard. Look, I'm fine with my man, but listen, I said some shit and he's making y'all pay for it. I learned my lesson. I want to read a quote to you. This is Pat Riley talking about the combination of Shaquille O'Neal and Dwayne Wade. Quote, Dwayne respects the fact that Shaq respects and embraces him. That's where Dwayne is so different. A lot of young players come into the league and have no respect for greatness or for great players who have done it. Their relationship has flourished because of both of them cooperating to be part of each other's games and to look out for one another. It's become a very dynamic duo. So three... Championships, three finals, MVP, you spoke to, if you ever got to the finals, you was going to dominate. You did that off to South Beach. What's that experience like with a young D-Wade? So when I got to D-Wade, I was like, I know you heard all the stories. It's your team. So we ain't going to problem. You the man. You the CEO. I'll be the consultant. Uh, for me to, to be a diamond duel with Shaquille O'Neal and people to see it happening so fast. I mean, it's only our second year playing together. And it happened so fast between both of us because we both have came in um, and said we're going to do whatever we can together to get, you know, one thing, and that's to get a, a championship ring. How do, you, how do you and Shaq, I mean, I, I'm assuming, and, and I pretty much know, I mean, y'all are very, very close. How did that happen? It's easy, man. You know Shaq. <laughs> Everybody knows Shaq, man. It's easy to, to get along with him. And, uh, but the one thing that we did have, you know, we sat down when he first got to Miami and I first came back from the Olympics. We sat down and we had a conversation for an hour and talked about everything that happened in L.A. Why was it important to you to be so open about the issues you and Kobe had because, coming into that situation? Be, because when you don't know a person, you have to go to what you hear or what you see. So, you know, he, he don't know me. You just know that I got a problem with a guy that takes shots. He takes shots. So I said, listen, that's how it goes now. First of all, he's a, a, a nice, humble kid. Second of all, I don't think he, he knows how, how good he can be. Third of all, he listens, and he's a great player. I know in this league that in, in order to win a championship, you have to have a great one-two punch. You hear those words from Shaquille O'Neal. How do you feel? Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it means a lot. Mm, but imagine that as a, a young yeah. D-Wade hearing this motherfucker yeah. say, I'm no, on I'm your trouble. team, but it's your team. You know, whenever he mentions my name in that kind of light, you know, it just makes me feel, you know, like I'm doing something right. Mm. Because crazy, I didn't, even, I didn't even, it's not that I don't pay attention to guys, I just don't care. I got my own yeah. thing going on. I was the type of player that never paid attention to other players, so right before the playoffs started, Miami Heat was playing Charlotte. I didn't even know who he was. So while we're in the playoffs, I'm watching him go at Baron Davis. I'm like, who is this? I was like, damn, this kid's nice. And I just kept watching him. <clears throat> so when it came time for me to be traded, 
knowing that I couldn't do it by myself. I needed a Penny Hardaway, Kobe Bryant type player. I went upstairs and said, okay, I'll let you trade me, but I'm going to play with D-Wade. Mm. I'm going to go back to Florida. Oh, they gave you that chance? They gave you that opportunity? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I want to go play with him. So as soon as he got there the first day, I said, look, man, you heard this, you heard that. Me and you ain't going to have no problem. You the man. What went on with me and the last guy, that could never happen with me and you. I'm going to help you. You're going to help me. And he said he had some differences over there that's something that we will not and cannot have down here, and I absolutely agree with him. And he just emerged as a great player. And then we had our first argument during the finals. The only time we had an altercation was when I had to check everybody during the finals that year. Was everybody Going waiting. into the finals, you were already no, in the finals. No, versus Dallas when we went down 0-2. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because I wasn't having a great finals and everybody was looking for me and I was like, why y'all looking for me? I don't, I don't know what was going on, but we were down 0-2, so I flipped it. What you gonna do, D-Wade? I got three people on me. Flash, what you gonna do? I got four people on me. What the hell y'all gonna do? So that, that was my way of getting, and then we just, three game, bing, 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 bing. When we took a timeout, Pat brought us all back. He said, I know you guys don't want to end your season like this. Come on, guys, come on, come on. First thing came out of Dwayne's mouth was, I'm not going out like that. Wade trying to find an opening. Backs it in. 32 for Wade. Wade drives left baseline, and he got to the rim and able to score with a foul on Dallas. Dribbles to the free throw line, the jump shot, and got it. Attacking the rim. Wade has brought Miami to within five. And he brought us back. And he brought us back. You know, single-handedly. And he's got it wide left beyond the stripe. Wait, left baseline, wide open. The jumper, go! And the Miami Heat right back in the NBA Finals. I just felt so proud walking off that court. And I didn't show it. You know, I went like a room like I do it every day. I felt so proud. Wade had done more than win one game. He had changed the series. Dwayne Wade all the time. Dwayne Wade rose to a level that we have never seen here with the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat have evened up this series. We haven't found the right solution to deal with Wade yet. It was as if whatever Miami needed, Wade would provide. Foul line jumper, good! Wade scored the last nine for Miami. In my Miller Lite. For Miami, of course, Wade coming off that spectacular 43-point center court. The officiating crew led by Steve Javi. Perry is the leading scorer for the Mavericks in these finals as Wade hits it and a foul. Wade with the jumper on a now. Wayne Wade knocks it down. Four and a half minutes without a point. Did we have another run? Wade. Howard on the drive. Blocked by Wade. Wade. Tough shot. Banks it in though. Wade. Banks it in. Stop. Wade spinning. Falling away. It's good. 9.1 remaining, and Dallas can tie it with a three-pointer. Terry, eight seconds. I'm seeing him come down the court, and I'm seeing him go up in motion. And shoot the shot. I'm like, he can't hit this shot. It's not scripted this way. And it's my moment. Terry, high right side. Terry puts it up. Won't go. Way to hold on. And the Miami Heat are champions of the basketball world. Shaq was like, hey, D, go up there. Go up to the front. I'm like, for what? He like for the MVP or what? I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, I guess I was. Took off finals MVP, and from that point on, he just, you know, emerged as probably one of the best two guards to ever play the game. The funniest, the funniest, most embarrassing thing was, so we get smacked during regular season, y'all, and then we beat Chicago, right? Mm-hmm. And the crowd starts chitting. Mm-hmm. We, we want the heat. Over a second remaining, he took a chance by throwing it into the crowd. We, we want the heat. We're watching the game, uh -huh. by the way. <laughs> we're, we're, we're all together watching the game. As a team, we're getting ready. You know, we're watching the, who our next opponent is going to be. They beat Chicago. It's a big thing. They, like, celebrating. They got yeah, T-shirts. Yeah, they, yeah. got, they got the whole <laughs> thing, right? And it was a big moment for them, so we get it. And then the crowd started going. Big moment for you guys. You know, we want the heat. Yeah. And there are fans are screaming, we want the heat. Right? So, you know, we have, we do have characters on our team that's realistic. And you got something like, no, we do not. No, we do not. No, we do not. Like, I'm like, oh, they, so we turn the TV off. They want uh -huh. us. They got us. No, Let's not. go make this quick. <laughs> they made it quick. Here goes Wade. 
Wade against Hughes. And along with Washington owner Abe Poland, Dwayne Wade off the drive. So we we play them. Getting sm go down there, smack, smack. Jameson goes out of bounds. And they keep saying keep them in front, and they don't. And the uh, deal with Dwayne Wade, you have to try to direct him in the area you want him to go. If you react to him, and that's what Larry Hughes did on that last. Come home, smack. We're in game four, right? Getting smacked. I'm on the sideline like, oh, my God. Can we just win one? And I look up in the stands, right? And it says, big old sign. We're at home, big old signs. You wanted the heat? Now you just got burned. <laughs> like, oh, that's home. That's home. Yo, here go, here go a key part to that story that Gilbert did not say. Once we got to D.C., no shot. I mean, you don't know what kind of confident boost that is. You know, coming from you know, our best player, the most dominant player in the NBA, telling me, take over the game. It's your game to, to, be, to win. It's your game to take over. And, I mean, I, I try to do it. You know, I don't want to let him down. And that's what he told him. Stop fooling around and take over the game. We want to win this game, and we want to win it with me on the sideline. In, in Miami, we had Shaq. No, no Shaq in D.C. So now, no Shaq, they at home. <coughs> yeah. Took it up a notch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we was the only team that got swept that year in the second round. <laughs> you know how bad you got to be to get swept in the second round? But it's just, first of all, though, Gil, it's just bad luck. You get the draw of... Shaq, me and early in my prime, you get LeBron a couple times in the playoff. Like, you just got a bad draw. Sometimes yeah. it's the matchup. <laughs> the Hanging around that full five area. That's just the wrong place to be. Us. Yeah, man. I got to ask you this um, because I've watched this matchup for years. The dynamic with you and Kobe. Can you go in a little bit about just the back and forth? I know y'all have a, a true friendship, but I do know y'all have a very spicy and competitiveness. Could you talk a little bit about it? Well, you didn't seem too nice to Kobe. I mean, y'all were on the court together. That was 7.37. That was after the tip-off. We, <laughs> <laughs> we both competed. You know, right. we, both, we both are fierce competitors. Kobe is one of the fierce competitors that ever played the game, and I'm a competitor also. Mm -hmm. So we both competed. That's at 7.37. When Shaq first came to Miami, people would look at Dwayne Wade and sort of like keep their eyes on you wondering how you'd look at Kobe, how you'd interact with Kobe on the court while going against him simply because Shaq's your boy now. Oh, yeah. And you know their relationship wasn't ideal at the time. So how did you feel about Kobe at the time when Shaq first came to Miami and you had to go up against him? The same way I do now. You know, you, you respect the player. You respect his greatness. You know, you respect that, you know, you, you got to be ready when you, when you play Kobe. You got to get your rest. You know, you got to come in and bring your A game. Uh, you know, but the same Shaq time. Shaq warned you about that? Shaq didn't have to. Foul on Haslam. That's his third. Well, ho-hum. Just another <laughs> spectacular move from Dwayne Wade. Flipping it over the Laker defense with that left hand. You know, obviously coming into the NBA, Iverson and Kobe was yeah. like, you know, the two that I like. I wanted to be on the court. Right. So it went from like my rookie year, like excited to play against you know one of my idols, to my second year, we going at it. Right. You know what I mean? We getting in scuffles. And that's when Cole started to respect me when he realized like I'm not backing down. And it's not that attention, it's just who I am. It feel a little strange guarding him after you guys spent the last two summers together, you know, playing alongside, winning gold together. Um, no, not really, not really strange. I, yeah, I think it's, um, it, it's more fun. You know, because we know each other, and um, you know, he's uh, he did a couple things tonight that he picked up from me this summer, <laughs> and uh, you know, I was able to pick up a couple of things from him this summer as well. So it's it's fun. I enjoyed it. I think we all enjoyed it. Uh, we all have a connection uh, for the rest of our lives. You know, um, I've never talked to Kobe the night before we played the Lakers in my previous five years, but you know, last night we talked, you know, numerous times because we have built that relationship um, as teammates, you know, forever. It's like uh, we're brothers forever because when we see each other, uh, it's like a party that nobody else is invited to. <laughs> Wait, what would you describe that the conversations you were having towards the end of the game? Then? Good natured? Oh yeah, good natured. <laughs> just, just, just fun. You know, just fun stuff. I mean, he walked just, right by you on the free throw. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, well he's telling me, you know, come on, miss one, make one interesting. And I told him, you know, this is, you know, this is where I make my money, man. I'm not missing these. <laughs> so that fall away, you know, you're right in his face. Is that one of his your your tricks? Would you say? Yeah, no, he picked up a couple of things. Uh, you know, defensively as well, he picked up a couple, couple of techniques that we kind of joked about a little bit, and uh, it's, it's good. It's good. 
One of the coolest moments for me in my career was I'm out of the playoffs and Kobe's in the playoffs and he calls me and he say, D, they guard me like this. I know you're great at picking rolls, you're great at splitting, what should I do? Yeah, we got to do a better job keeping him in front. I mean, he's, he might be the best in the league at using screen rolls. He does a great job splitting them, you know, and going and getting to the outside corner. So we got to do a much better job corralling them, keeping them in front. So I give him my whole, this is what I, this is what I, this is what I look for, this is what I do, this and that. Being able to split the defense, a lot of it is, is split second. Wade getting the screen from Beasley, splits the double team, away he goes. It's about, you know, reading, reading the defenders, reading the game. Now I get off the phone, I lost it. I'm like, oh, just call me, you know what I'm saying? In January of 2009, Dwayne Wade took himself to another level, leading the NBA in scoring with 28.1 points per game. In Phoenix, the chatter around the league of whether Dwayne Wade should be considered an MVP candidate evolved into a buzz. He definitely has to be in contention for that MVP. You can't leave him out of the equation. Silence all the critics about him being back and being back to flash. It's the best basketball I've seen him play since the finals. Um, I mean, he's unbelievable. He's doing everything, getting to the line, making outside shots. He's defending. He's rebounding. You know, if he's not talked in, in terms of the MVP, then I think they, you know, they're really not giving it a fair you know, assessment of the MVP. I think uh, no matter what it, you can say about his team, you take him away from his team, uh, I'm pretty sure they would not be as successful as you take away LeBron and you take away Kobe. You know, I'm pretty sure those teams would still be competitive. Not to speak down on his teammates, you know, just in terms of how much he represents uh, offensively and defensively on that team and the leadership. You know, so um, that, for whatever reason, never goes into consideration of the MVP. And I think you know that should have some, some real hardcore understandings that. You know, this kid, each and every day, if he's not playing, they don't have a chance to win. And then when he does, then they can beat anybody on the basketball court. I think Michael retired the year before I came to the league. Strategically. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to tell you my mindset in 2010 when I was a free agent. For me, it wasn't about money. It wasn't about nothing but winning. A lot of people don't believe this. A lot of people think we had this already set up. Brian called and said, what are you thinking? I said, bro, I want to win championships. I'm tired of getting knocked out in the first round. Mm -hmm. It sucks. And then it went from there to saying, yo, let's do it together. Mm -hmm. Act two of your story brought change. And to be here with D-Wade, to be here with CB, I understand now uh, that I've made the right decision. As new characters were introduced to your narrative, identities were altered, then forged through fire, hammer, and anvil. Pressure like that couldn't have hindered you, but instead, it hardened you. Don't say I wish I would have. Let's go. Then you reached the top of the mountain twice more. And the Miami Heat are going to be back-to-back -back champions of the basketball world. Different cast, same conclusion. To the last second, to the last man, we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight. We fight. I was a victim of one of them trash <laughs> Euro. That was definitely one of my top Euros of all time. It's all good, because, listen, what you got to know, that's probably top five, one of the most tired I was. Oh, my God. <laughs> now you see me. Oh, now you oh. don't, Kevin Garnett. When you first got to the league, who was the first person to bust your ass? Oh, that's easy. Uh, my first welcome to the league was uh, LeBron, D. Wade, and Chris Bosh in that Miami Heat team. Yeah, big so team. it was the preseason game, but I still considered it as my welcome. You yeah. feel me? So we played in Kansas City. Kansas City is the site for the Washington Wizards and Miami Heat in exhibition season. And the crowd gets to see, yeah, that man, Dwayne Wade. And in the first quarter, right 20 seconds into the game, there he goes. D Wade, I'm reading the scout report. Scout report says, "Stay down on pump fakes." First thing he do, spin, uh, pump fake, <laughs> right into my ribs, and I said, "Ah, okay, yeah, this is you got to you got to lock in. You got a long way to go." This so is a different level, right? Here. <laughs> they stole. They were stealing the ball, throwing lobs left and right, and it was. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is real. So 
that was my welcome. It was the first, first, my first time stepping on the floor was my welcome to the league and that Miami Heat team. The big three era, amazing era for the Miami Heat. When I look at this photo, what I see is I see something of legend. We didn't really talk about scoring titles and covers of magazines and all the things that we ended up doing. We just talked about winning the championship. It took some sacrifice to do that, but ultimately we achieved our goal. Playing basketball with those guys was amazing, but I think the relationship that we built away from the game was special. It changed everything for me, for Brian, for Chris, for this organization. It put us in a different light. You know, we was able to go to finals four years in a row and win two of them, and it was hard. But I think, you know, we all learned something about ourselves. Wait, speak, speaking of Twitter, uh, that purple, uh, the fat Hornets fan in purple is kind of, you and we're uh, trying to get at each other. Uh, get at each other? Yeah, you guys nah. were trying to exchange words. I'm not giving him any more attention. He got enough. Here on ESPN, a sellout crowd in one of the biggest nights in the past 14 years for this franchise. Charlotte with a chance to advance. Miami trying to stay alive. Game six coming up next. What do you have him on your all-time uh, two guard list? I had him behind Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Fakes back up to Wade. A rare three. It's good. Wade, another three. It's good. Dwayne Wade from downtown. Dwayne Wade knocks down a huge three pointer for the Miami Heat. But that's greatness personified. Wade leans in, forming away, puts it in! Dwayne Wade does it again! And Charlotte has to call timeout. To knock down big shots. Purple shirt man, have a seat. Mama, there goes that man. Your second act saw your arrival as one of the most respected athletes on earth and your departure from the home that helped you get there. I know in the back of your mind, you were already thinking about, you know, Boston days, you know, the similarities. But what you got to take into account is, you know, the history between, uh, you know, you and D. Wade and coming into that. You've gone against Rajan in playoff settings for years. Hated him. And Wade and Rhino, they're still chatting with each other. What are, right now, what are either one of them thinking about? Uh, <clears> or <throat> oh, dirty plays that you've seen him play in the past, so that's, that's what it is. Oh, he got a, his leg came out from underneath him as he knocked him down. Laid in the post, more out of frustration than anything. And a technical foul has been hit as Rondo and Wade go chest to chest. Why even get involved in this stuff where you're giving away points and taking a chance of, uh, that's one technical, getting a second one. They did a pretty job keeping under wraps of who they were trying to get. Um, so actually, once I committed, you know, I wanted to know who, who was the guy they were trying to get. <laughs> and uh, I was excited that it was Wade. And um, when you come up on a guy like Dwayne Wade, I don't think, I don't think you can pass with opportunity. Yes, yeah, so I've talked to Wade. Like I said, we've talked text. Um, but when you talked to Dwayne, did you guys have any fun with what happened in 11 and 12, your guys' history? I know that's part of the seat of the battle stuff. So did you guys touch on that or talk about it? No, that? we didn't touch on it. We just, you know, <laughs> we're, we're older, we're wiser, and uh, <laughs> we're moving forward. And like I said, to, to play with a guy like that, that's, you know, the, that I know I've battled against personally. Um, it's always great to have a guy like that on your side. No, but how, how, how odd was that, that first time going against the Heat? Yeah, it, it was terrible. Like, we had a back-to-back, -to -back too, right? We come from Atlanta. We get in Miami. I don't have a lot of time to do nothing but just go to my house. And, I, and once I get off the bus, I'm trying to like, okay, it's a regular game. It's a regular game. I get off the bus and immediately I knew it wasn't a regular game. For fans of the Miami Heat, it has to be a strange sight to see Dwayne Wade in the uniform of the Chicago Bulls. Like it was just, a, it was crazy. And I walked to the, to the visitor's locker room. I've never been in the visitor's locker room, like unless it was like a concert, but it looked way different. So you never really got a chance to experience it. And everything was just weird. Like even that my shoes didn't fit right that day. Like nothing felt good that day. And I go out there 
and I'm seeing all these familiar faces that has been rooting for me and they still rooting for me, but it's just, it's just weird. Cause I'm on the opposite side of the court. Uh, I couldn't wait to get that game over with. I, I definitely wanted to get a win. I told my team, I said, listen, don't worry about feeding me the ball all game and trying to make this a D Wade comes back and scores 30 plus. Like, let's just get a win and get out of here because this is the, this is the one of the weirdest feelings I've ever had. Dwayne Wade is back. Well, it's a dream come true for Heat fans. My eyes and the heart was always here. I said that from the beginning. You know, who I am in the core and deep down inside um, is always here. I mean, me personally, um, I, I would have been very successful in, in, this, in this league uh, without D-Wade. But for, to accomplish what I really wanted to accomplish in this league, and that's winning at the highest level, I needed him. And that's why I made the jump. You understand how important he's been to the game throughout his career. And no matter who you root for throughout the league, you respect uh, greatness in terms of what he's been able to do throughout his entire career. So, um, you know, tonight wasn't a loud night, but he had some pretty uh, influential plays. And it seems like he's got a lot more in the tank. That's, that's what I told him after the game. I was like, are you sure? I know you got a lot of stuff going on off the court, your family and all that. Are you sure you... You know, have a couple more years left in there. That is a jersey exchange to remember. Two of the game's all-time great players. You come to Dwayne, man. You you were um, so great for us fans. So entertaining, so exciting for us to watch. Definitely one of the best two guys to ever play the game. Turn inside the way down the middle. Oh, hey, hey, His toughness was undeniable, um, how hard he played, how many times he hit the floor, got right back up, kept fighting. Wade, oh, Wade, Wade with a steal, with two, Wade puts it up for the win, yeah, he did it, he did it, Dwayne Wade. I was always a big fan of him, um, I still am. I'm seeing everybody treat him the way that he's supposed to be treated on his way out, it makes me proud of him all the fans and the organizations that's sending him away um, the way he should be. Last minute, to the last second, to the last man! We fight, we fight, we fight. Competing against him, can you try and put into words what he's meant to the game? Uh, man, uh, he's done so many great things. I mean, you just, I think everybody's so honored uh, you know, to, to have played against him and I obviously know him. I don't know him as well as the guy on the other end of the table, but I've had a lot of battles with him. And, and just talking with him, going against him, you, you know uh, that when you step on the court against him, you have to bring your A, your a plus game. And I've had many battles with him. And we all we talked uh, the first preseason game, kind of reminiscing. And as we went on through the season and to our last game, uh, just remembering the good times, and I tell you what, uh, he's one of the, the best two guards to ever play this game. So you're there for his final home game, of course, in the Sixers uniform. Talk about how that atmosphere influenced you to want to sign with Miami. The love, the love that he got, well deserved at that. Um, but the way that everybody came out to support him, knowing what he's done for the city, uh, for the culture, for the organization, I mean, I. I want a piece of that love too. Not saying that I can compare to Dwayne Wade because I don't think anybody can. But uh, I think what he's done for this city, I want to try and pick up where he left off. Every every moment from your career is going to come back, you know, fast into your mind. And for me, just a kid with a dream, man. I had a dream of playing a game of basketball, and now I can to walk away and say, high school, Jersey retirement. College, Jersey retired. NBA, Jersey retired. You know what, kid? You did all right. And if you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, hit that notification button, and comment down below which player you'd like to see next. I am out, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.